are in process of developing a whole series of techniques which uh, will enable the controlling oligarchy to get people actually to love their servitude. Uh, people can be made to enjoy a state of affairs which by any decent standard they ought not to enjoy. There's a need for a new world order. Someday, in the next few years, a solution will emerge. Don't assume it was left by accident. If you see something, say something. Vice President Dick Cheney. We are changed. Takes a question from David Rockefeller. Mr. President, uh, I just enjoyed so much your whole speech, but I was particularly pleased that you gave such a strong endorsement for the free trade agreement for all the Americans. A subject that has been a great concern to me for many years, particularly recently. And I think it's absolutely essential for the strength of our economy. To fulfill the long-held promise of a new world order, we can find meaning and reward by serving some higher purpose than ourselves. A shining purpose, the illumination of a thousand points of light. What is at stake? is more than one Exposing small Exposing the collectivist global it elites. It is a big idea. Malthusian quest for a, a new, new world, world order. order. A one world where dictatorial government where all are aspects of human life thoughts. are under their control. To achieve the universal aspirations of mankind. We are change. Where news the mainstream media ignores is the top story and your voice is heard. Good evening everyone, this is Howard Nima. And you are listening and watching We Are Change. Um, my co-host, Vinny Be The Truth, unfortunately had a problem with his vehicle. Uh, hopefully he'll be able to get here. He had some car trouble. And I'm hoping that he'll make it to the broadcast. If not, We Are Change Connecticut and We Are Change and Enformed Radio are proud to have uh, presenting to you this evening uh, Anthony J. Hilder. In just a few minutes I'll be giving him a call and we'll be talking on air. Uh, again, having uh, the, the typical uh, franticness at the beginning of the show, getting things ready. We're also going to be joined by Dr. Edward Spencer, who will be sharing his vast knowledge of research, as well as his uh, uh, in, uh, research into the New World Order, the conspiracy, and the reasons why, and the motivations for the Illuminati. And as he puts it, the whole enchilada, uh, which is going to be an incredible segment coming up as well. Um, just to give you a brief overview, uh, everybody in the truth community is aware of Anthony J. Hilder. How could you not? Um, uh, Mr. Hilder is the creator of the Free World Alliance, dedicated and determined to alter the course of planet Earth by destroying the Illuminati's capacity to carry out their crimes. Uh, his uh, resume is vast, as, uh, as uh, incredibly uh, deep uh, in, the, in the information and uh, regarding his personal... Uh, Work. He's uh, produced uh, songs. He's been a, an A&R man in the music business. He's owned his own record company. He did two songs in Pulp Fiction. He's made over 20 documentary films. Uh, he made the seminal work uh, in 1967 exposing the CFR and the Illuminati in the Illuminati and CFR, which was um, narrated by uh, Myron Fagan. Uh, it's truly an honor to, to be calling Mr. Hilder. I'm going to just be giving him a call. Uh, in a moment here, um, and, uh, and we will uh, be speaking with Anthony Hilder. Uh, of course, I will also be having uh, a long discussion uh, with Ms. Dr. Spencer, who is a good friend of Anthony Hilder and has a lot to say about uh, many of these things we will be discussing. Um, and again, I'm just calling Mr. Hilder. It sounds right like now. we're calling from uh, uh, Captain Nemo's uh, submarine. You're right, just for a moment there, but who, who, what's the, uh, where, uh, the echo I can stop, but uh, who, where's that music on the front? Anyway, that was crazy. Okay. Um, Sorry, that was Mr. just something to fill the uh, gap there. Okay. Mr. Hilder, it is such a pleasure and honor to have you on. Um, and again, we were just talking uh, while we were off the air, trying to get back on the air, about the skull and bones, and... Uh, Maybe we should start there in our discussions, but certainly you have the floor, sir, and please um, uh, 
speak out to the people and let them know what you want them to know. The Skull and Bones uh, was really first laid out to the public of the world through a friend of mine who wrote a book uh, called the a great, great book entitled The Order. And we're talking about the new world order. Ein Volk, ein Reich, ein Führer, one world, one race, one ruler. But it wasn't from Adolf Hitler. No, we're talking about the world order that is part of the uh, Zionazi cabal who is designing uh, a world minus 19 out of 20 of us. They want to kill us. They want to control us. They want to take everything that we have, everything to smile about, everything to praise God about, because they want to take away God. They are the absence of God. They are uh, a Luciferian organization. In their initiation, they lay nude in the coffin, and they're born again into the satanic order. George Herbert Walker Bush, the president of the United States, was called, um, what was he called now? Magog. Magog. The man who wages war against God in the final days of earth. And his son was, again, the president of the United States. And under his tutelage, uh, we had a thing called 911, or 911, or the World Trade Center, the atrocity that that, uh, that fell upon this country by design. So you guys out there in, I believe you're in the state of uh, Connecticut. Actually, there's a place out there called Yale. And on the Yale campus, there is the tomb. And in the tomb is where they take that ceremony and are born again into the satanic order. There's no question about it. Dr. Anthony Sutton, who wrote the book, The Order, was a friend of mine. He wrote it uh, in what is now Gary Richard Arnold's house. Uh, Gary's built another house over the same location in Santa Cruz. And if it were not for Dr. Sutton getting this information sent to him by... Um, a family member of a skull and bone of skull and bones this would not have come out it would not be out uh, just as the illuminati cfr records would not have been out if it were not for myron fagan myron is a, f a friend of mine and uh, uh, set me on the right track on the right path and um, as a consequence there are now in excess of a billion people on the planet Earth that know something of, or at least have heard of, the Illuminati. Well, that's true, and it's it's amazing the work that you've done, and and you you identified so much, and and uh, again, in, especially here in Skull and Bones in Connecticut, uh, it's really where it all started in the history and. Um, you know, you are reaching uh, not just the state of Connecticut. This is a is a worldwide transmission. We actually have uh, listeners across the world here, so we are literally reaching through our networks, which I'll uh, plug a little bit later on. Probably the better part, better part of a of a million people uh, worldwide. Uh, it is a growing network uh, through the We the People Network, which is Roger Landry's fine organization of Americans, one million one hundred thousand strong, uh, all trying to wake up the people to what's going on. So um, well, we have uh, our good. Well, it's our good fortune to have uh, a doctor on board, and he has extraordinary vision and extraordinary dedication. I don't know which is more important: the dedication or the vision. But in this particular case, we have a doctor with vision and dedication. And he talks about uh, the Zion Nazis. And people say, well, oh, you're talking about uh, the Jews. No, we're not talking about the Jews. We're talking about people who are really anti-Semitic. Um, one, one second, Ed. Could, um, I'm sorry, Ed. I think, could you just, uh, y your mic is, uh, could you mute that mic there? 
for a second. Okay, you hearing some sound? Yeah, you hear a lot of sound. Your mic, you got a great connection, but I need to mute your mic until you speak, and when you speak, uh, please unmute it. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we're not really exactly high, high tech here, you know, but I, I, can't, I can't do it from here. I'm sorry. Um, but anyway, yeah, just do that, and we'll get a clearer connection. I'm sorry to interrupt you, Mr. Hilder. I just want to get a clear transmission. Well, uh, part of the big picture is getting the clear transmission. It's getting the big picture. It's getting all of the bits and pieces, all of the sections together so we hear th things clearly. Sometimes we can hear, but we don't get the big picture. In this picture, we, at, this, at this time, we need both. So we're on with uh, Dr. Ed Spencer, friend of mine, patriot, dedicating this portion of his life and from, from this portion on out to saving the world, literally, because there is a world war and it's being conducted against us. Every day Hello? Can anyone yes. hear me now? Yes. This Hello. is uh, Sherry Kane and Dr. Leonard Horowitz joining the call. Oh, good. Glad that you joined the car call. So let's talk about the war on we the people, uh, Mr. Hilder, and how your involvement is in that, the war on we the people, how, the, how you are part of the reason why the, the message never gets to the masses because you're involved in a co-intel-pro operation, which you have denied. Oh, my goodness. Oh, goodness that, gracious. This, this is something. Uh, you, you have also I, denied I, I that you been, have... Oh, I have been you, told by Lynn Horowitz, Dr. Lynn Horowitz, on stage, on stage at the Karen Spiracy Con, that I told him I was a member of the Central Intelligence Agency, the CIA. And that's just a great surprise to me because I never picked up a check. Well, you know, this is Dr. Lynn Horowitz right now, and frankly, that's what you not only told me, but your friends Robert Kassar and many others who knew you from the, many years ago, you, in fact, said to me, I'd like to show you my bullet hole in my chest as I was part of the agency, and I assumed that you were telling me the truth. Now, I don't understand why you would deny what you told myself and Robert Kassar and other people, as a matter of fact, that you were with the agency, that currently you have a, a scar on your chest associated allegedly with a bullet hole that you received in the service of the CIA, and that now you're making a claim that I somehow fabricated this. And well, not only can, that, listen, uh, 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 Dr. Horowitz, and we can only one speak at each time. Uh, if you tell another lie, you're going to turn to stone. In so fact, that, that I'll, 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 I will make one deal with you. If you don't tell another lie about me, I won't tell the truth about you. Uh, well, no, I, I encourage you to tell all the truth, including, you know, what is it? What is uh, Miss Kane's bus size, according to you? And these are the kinds of truths that you put out. And the, the bottom line is that you represent those for people within our groups, the, the awareness movement, the holistic health movement, people who are concerned about patriotism, Christianity, the, the fundamentalist movements that we praise God and we want to see our planet a healthy and safe place to live in our, for our children and our children's children. And what's interesting is how you associate yourself and frequently discredit yourself as that is a kind of like path of mnemonic or it's diagnostic, it's indicative of a COINTEL pro operative that discredits everything. The, in, the movements have been infiltrated. No when, question about uh, that. If, if there has been a movement that's been infiltrated, it's been infiltrated by you. Well, yeah, you know, that's and, right. But, but, frankly, we've had. frankly, in 1996, I infiltrated the movement with a book called Emerging Viruses, AIDS, and Ebola. That was three years of work, meticulously documented scientific reference that included the United States government contracts under which numerous AIDS-like and Ebola-like viruses were bioengineered by the Army's sixth top biological weapons contracting lab. And within, within probably three months, Terry Reed, who you know, I know, and we associated just like you and I considered ourselves friends at one point, I considered Terry Reed a friend. Well, Terry Reed passed that book on to a number of people in Hollywood, just like... 
Steven Seagal received my book, Healing Codes for the Biological Apocalypse, and then spun the screenplay into a story where it made me the villain, associated with a guy named Larry Wayne Harris, who was another well, I, CIA... I, 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 I do happen to know, Lynn, I do happen to know a fella named... Uh, you just mentioned his name, an actor? Yes. That's right. He, he, he and a number and of people actor, in Hollywood... What, 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 that, what actor are you talking about? Uh, Steven Seagal, new U.S. Navy SEAL, engaged in propaganda through the mainstream media in Hollywood. <laughs> well, I do know Steven Seagal. Yeah, uh, well, that's nice that you know him. But, the problem but, but is I, that... But, but, but I have had never, I've never had a, a conversation with Steven Seagal regarding you. Well, you know, again, the bottom line is... Why do you engage in less than highly professional quality filmmaking and truth telling, which well, you're saying, now, wait you want in the truth? Wait, 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 wait. Listen, Len, you're saying you're making a statement as if it's a statement of fact that I make films and, that are of lesser quality. Okay, uh, you were excited. Certainly, you were if somebody was if certainly if, if somebody was going to make a film in the industry they would make it of the best quality, quality that they possibly could. Uh, and I no, have been in you? charge of production. I have been in charge of production at the what was the studio called, at one time, the David Selznick Studio, at one time called RKO Cafe, at one time called the Laird Entertainment, national studio and uh, uh, certainly I would have had to have some sort of quality to be executive vice president in charge wait a minute everybody listen I, I don't know uh, what the the actual accusations here are um, I've I've known mr. Hilder's work for many years I've known mr. Hilder for a long time and I don't see any I don't see COINTELPRO here I'm pretty good uh, Researcher myself, uh, he's getting out the information. Uh, I, you know, I, I don't. I, I, you're talking about the same things. You're talking about exposing vaccines, and meanwhile, that's what Dr. Spencer is going to be talking about. Um, so exactly, it's all controlled opposition. Who am I speaking with? This is Howard Nima. What is your name? We are Change, and you're on Informed Radio. What is radio. your name? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What was your name? Howard Nima. Howard. Okay, Howard Nima. I don't know if you're familiar with Dr. Leonard Horowitz or even myself, Sherry Kane, but we're two of the most endangered journalists in the world. We pulled the rug under, out from under the conspiracy movement. They wanted us out of the conspiracy movement after we exposed the fact that Mr. Hilder and his associate, Ted Gunderson, who was the head of the FBI in Los Angeles, claiming to protect children from child sex trafficking and satanic crimes. In reality, Gunderson was a double agent. He was married to Anton LaVey, who was the founder of the Church of Satan's ex-wife. Um, he was married to Diana Risley. We have a private letter that was given by one of his dearest friends, who when she found out he was involved in these criminal acts against children, not protecting them, but just the complete opposite. Mr. Hilder... Uh, let me say something on behalf of my friend, because he's not here. He's I'm not dead. done speaking yet, Mr. Uh, Hilder. Let me just let me finish. For, uh, I'm not done right speaking. Now. I will tell you the truth about Ted Gunderson. He was a close friend. He was a patriot. Did more for the United States than any other individual in the FBI that I have ever known. We've been close friends, Ted Gunderson and I. And... Uh, Sherry Mr. Hilder, isn't and, uh, it Dr. Horowitz that you stated at the conspiracy bad conference? Bad Mr. rapping, bad rapping, uh, both Ted Gunderson and uh, Mr. Hilder, uh, who has one of the most uh, famous radio shows in the world right now. Isn't Alex it true Jones. that you stated at the conspiracy conference that you and Ted Gunderson virtually exclusively, single-handedly, created the conspiracy movement? He said it on that videotape, too. No, yes, I did you not. You did say it on video I, I as well. This, uh, uh, Jordan Maxwell gives me credit for taking, for uh, starting or helping start the conspiracy. I, I don't know you bad mouth in that video also. You, don't, you think that Jordan Maxwell is a double agent. You have stated virtually, along with uh, his friend, uh, who you berated, named Ivy West. 
Is that correct? Right? I don't know what you've been smoking, but uh, uh, I'm not smoking Dr. anything, Mr. Holder. I don't know. I don't. And, and that is an abusive uh, comment that has no place in a debate. Mr. Hilter, when you were accused... You're, gonna, you're not going to determine for me what has place in a debate. Okay. Mr. Hilter, when you, when, you to, when you learn how to properly a debate... Jail file protector, Mr. Hilter, Hilter what you went and did was you created a video on your chemtrail site that had nothing to do with chemtrails about me, Sherry Kane. You, yourself, have no right. You're 70, 80 years old. Sherry is too pay. You're telling everyone on a scale from one to ten, Sherry Kane is a six and a half. This is this was your way of defense. Uh, she's sort of like a Monica Lewinsky. This is how you actually went in defending you, yourself and your buddy being accused of being pedophile protectors. You went and made a video, a close-up picture of yourself video, claiming that I am all of these things to do with my feminine side. You did not ever make a defense against the fact that you've been accused of all of spoken of And you, your buddy came after Dr. Horowitz in 2007 and started to libel him as part of a campaign with a Dr. Truot and Greg Zemanski and uh, Craig Oxley, jo Eric John Phelps. You guys well, are all... Know, uh, first of all, you were telling me that I have an association with Dr. Yeah. Truot I you did by email. 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 We, have all, the we have all the evidence, and we've been publishing it. And you know that very well, Mr. Hilder, that you have all been exposed. Your buddy Gunderson worked under J. Edgar Hoover to start the COINTELPRO movement, to, to actually stop activists and what they call dissidents from actually going out and speaking the truth or creating peace. That's not what you're about. You come out and claim that you're one of us, but that's all part of your control. No, listen, that's how you I infiltrated not, the activist Sherry, movement. Uh, Sherry, I'm just speaking to Sherry Kane. I do not claim that I am part of, of you or have any association with you whatsoever. You at claim to be a time, patriot. I, you claim to be an time, activist. I considered, I considered Dr. Horowitz to be a friend. And Until you guys when, screwed him when, over. When, when I, I'm uh, in the back. So you stabbed him in the back and you started to libel him with all of your buddies, including Gunderson, directing a whole group of guys to put him on a fake Knights of Malta list under Henry Kissinger and Richard Nixon. Why would you do something like that? Why would you and your buddies create a fraudulent list? And then what you did was you well, took the list. Sherry Kane is now making statements as a matter of something as a matter of fact when this. These are facts. These, I attest to them. They are material facts that evidence, prima facie evidence of this conspiracy involving you, Mr. Gunderson, Mr. Truot. The, a Truot, it's not even his real name. It's Alma Fiat. He's not a, D, uh, not a PhD. He's not an MD. He's a fake doctor. He's a fraud. The entire movement has been infiltrated. You know, the reality is we all know the movement is infiltrated. You've got the question. Who would be the infiltrators? Well, Those who, who are literally discrediting everything and everyone and having us look into, for example, this situation of the Zionists. Well, gee whiz, look at all the people who are publishing literally anti-Semitic material in the name of patriotism or Christianity or fundamentalism. The reality is it's saying all oh, the same old, goodbye to the sheep, the, 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 the flock. The and the reality is, is Mr. Hilder, you are is Dr. engaged Horowitz. in that. The reality is, Dr. Horowitz, you had, and I talked to, um, this lady who is uh, in Hawaii and who works with you. Are you talking, Mr. I Ms. Ivy West? No, I think oh, we're talking about uh, Ivy West. She works. She works for a Zionist organization. I don't know that. I've never seen million, one document. It would not surprise me, Mr. Holder. I would organization. You Mr. Holder, it, it would not surprise me. First of all, uh, is that is it a Mossad organization? Are you in the Mossad? Are you in the Mossad? Because this certainly looks like a, a Mossad operation, but I'm not talking about really Zionists. I'm talking about the Zion Nazis. Exactly. My concern is the Zion Nazis, not the Zionists. Because I, I would consider my Zionist, myself a Zionist with a small Z, but I would consider possibly those who are in association with you as Zion Nazis.
And you say, well, how does that make any sense? How does it make sense that the Zionists could be con conducting operations which in turn bring about wars? The Zionists are involved in the creation of wars. They're attempting now to create a war with Iran. All right. And I see it that way. Others of uh, who think similar to I see it that way. You have been blasting Alex Jones. Well, that's the thing, uh, uh, Mr. Hilder. Listen, you know, it's the message. You know, I, I, I what really honestly bothers me, and listen, I, 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 all of us are trying to fight for the same goddamn thing. And if, if somebody does, if we know we're under mind control, we know we're under all of this propaganda, we have to, as truth seekers, and, and we have to have our own uh, visions, and we have to have our own opinions, we know that nobody else is telling the truth. So then what are you saying? It's COINTELPRO because Alex Jones is COINTELPRO. Um, you know, uh, you know all, uh, George Norrie is COINTELPRO because he reaches more people. I mean, of course, you know, Rush Limbaugh is clearly COINTELPRO. I really don't, for, for, for my benefit. It's a joke, Mr. Hilder. What I'm trying for, to say for, is for, we're, we're for losing benefit, sight of the... I would like to know what COINTELPRO means to you guys. Well, to me, it's well, to them, no, let them go ahead. On. This is Dr. Horowitz and, and Sherry Kane. Go ahead, guys. COINTELPRO is counterintelligence propaganda program that was literally part of the MK Ultra program for mind control, population control, for social uh, conditioning through mainstream media propaganda and infiltration through the, uh, this whole COINTELPRO operation of the activist organizations, those targeted as dissident activists that didn't go along with a virtually globalist agenda. Those people then were targeted by J. Edgar Hoover and his California sidekick, who is Ted Gunderson, your good friend, that you claimed on several occasions to have literally started the entire conspiracy movement and industry virtually what well, it is well, today. Well, first of all, that is one big lie, because I never claimed to start the uh, movement. Yes, yes, you, you did. did. In the did video I you made of me on the Central site, I, you I'm did. I'm talking right now, Sherry. Uh, I never claimed to start the movement. I would be happy to have started the movement. I would be proud to start the movement, which exposes the Illuminati, which exposes you, which exposes the uh, Zionazi. Uh, do I think that you guys are speaking on their behalf? Pretty much so. But uh, when I hear something from Len that I told Len and uh, that I was a member of the Central Intelligence Agency, which is simply the enforcement arm of the Council on Foreign Relations, when in fact I'm the first individual in the United States to link the Illuminati with the Council on Foreign Relations in 19, let's see, 1967 67. initially, and it became 1967, and I released the Illuminati CFR records. That predates anything you've ever done in this movement. Anything you've ever done well, in the movement. Well, give me a gold star on your forehead, Anthony. <laughs> Look, I don't no, think it's I'm about not, a, go a gold the, the, star, that, guys. Uh, but, but, you know, why, why would you lie and say that I'm, I told you... There's, there's never I'm been one lie that's come across agency. from our, our, our telephone right now. The reality is you did make that claim, not only in front of the audience at the Conspiracy Expo, but you also made it on video. It is available on video. I think it is in that attack that you rendered so why, Elizabeth, against why you Jerry Kane. Why don't you do this? If I ever said that I was in the CIA... Why don't you bring out that tape? Now, now you're diverting and you're manipulating. No, I'm not you diverting. I'm not just, I want some honesty from you. It just, you, you just you shifted. We can talk about the bullet hole in your chest that you allegedly told me and, every, and, and, and everybody and other friends of ours, <laughs> including Robert Kassar. We just had recently a conversation. I understand that you're doing some gold deals with Robert Kassar, which is very nice, Anthony. But the reality is... We both laughed at the fact that you told us and others that you were with the CIA, that you did take a hit, and that it is marked on your chest. Now, that's not a lie. That's testimony by people who you considered your friends at one point. And it's, and 
you know, it would make sense that you were in the FBI well, that, that, CIA that, uh, when your best friend Gunderson was working with the head of the FBI in Los Angeles. So, it's, you know, it's obvious that you guys work together. It's no, you know, it's, it's no uh, secret to anybody. I don't know why you're trying to conceal that. But there could be a reason why, and that's because... Once people realize who you really are, Hilda, they're gonna they're gonna wake up. More and more people are waking up to the fact that you are a pedophile protector along with all of your cronies. What? You guys commit horrible crimes against children. I'm not saying you do it personally, but you are somebody who well, you're, helps you're saying, children. You're you help the children, which is the largest money Mary making Jane, largest money making right. program Mary, in the world. One of them uh, is child Jane, sex trafficking. Drugs and arms and child sex trafficking and the the whole pedophile issue and pornography and XXX media. Anthony, the reality is that's what's going on in the world today. This is absolutely, totally insane. Not only insane, but absurd. I don't know what kind of drugs you guys are taking. You're, uh, Anthony, that's very nice. You know, just stay with, stay with the focus fast. You know, stay with the argument. You can stop the slander, the libel, the disease. You and your colleagues and cronies have consistently rendered against me since 2007. Okay, let's just get down to the basic You're not facts. Talk me down. All right, listen, guys. You've already been talked down. You're talking yourself down, Hilbert. If you would like to have a conversation, you'll have to talk one to one. Very good point. Not two to one. Not talk over. But let's talk facts. Ted Gunderson head of the FBI in Los Angeles, Dallas, and Memphis, was in fact under the guidance of J. Edgar Hoover, the head cop in the United States. You were saying uh, to me that I am some agent of the Central Intelligence Agency, which is the enforcement arm of the Council on Foreign Relations, the very organization at 58 East 68th Street in New York City, which I first linked to the Illuminati in 1967. That's history. That is history. You can go to the history books and find that out. I would not be exposing my. I would not come up and expose myself as a member of the Council on Foreign Relations, when I despise the Council on Foreign Relations, when all of the films that I have made expose the Council on Foreign Relations. That's what I do. And I have done it for many, many years. You know, Anthony, you, you, may you, I you, just you've, you've written a good book. You have written a good book on uh, uh, viruses. Anthony, I've written many books. I've written several good books. But, you know, when you, when you asked me for another interview on chemtrails, when I had previously given you already three interviews on that subject, and, you know, you really didn't want to talk about the great news that could set humanity free, which is the musical issue of 528 frequency and my latest work in that field. You didn't want to deal with that. You just wanted to deal with, again, the chemtrail issue. The and 528 frequency, Lynn. I don't know whether it's, it's something out of your imagination, it's uh, something you made up. I have no idea what the 528 frequency is all about. Not yeah, well, then you may, might want to withhold and, and, your and, and, statement. And so, and so far as interviews, I have done, I've done several interviews, although they're not long in length, uh, but maybe two or three minutes, with uh, Dr. Lynn Horowitz. And Many. I never, ever said that... I, why would I say that I would be um, tell you that I was in the Council on Foreign Relations? I, I never said that. I don't know. I don't have any idea. I have no material evidence to make that statement. We just said you were part. Of, you were a member of the CIA, which you have told many, many people for many years until you decided to change. Well, the Council on Foreign Relations. Is, you know, is exposed. The Council on Foreign Relations. Trying to distance yourself from the, the Council, CIA, Mr. Hill. Uh, excuse me. The Council on Foreign Relations. Is the guiding uh, is the guiding light, although it be the, the the Illuminati light, of the Central Intelligence Agency? You said that I was in the Central. I told you I was in the Central Intelligence Agency, and others. Many people. Many people. No, no, is that, I'm asking Lynn. Lynn, 
Can you speak for yourself rather than have Yes, yeah, as a matter of fact, we were right next to Maureen Solomon, who Maureen Solomon Kennedy for the Health Freedom Movement. She was sitting at the table in the restaurant when I first met you. I walked up, you introduced yourself, you shook my hand, you began to explain your background, which included a CIA agency commission as well as now a bullet hole in your chest that you're denying. No, I've, I have a bullet in, in my body. I was shot. That's what I you told shocked. me. Yes. And, now, thanks uh, for admitting the truth. Because you denied it on a panel at the conspiracy conference. You denied it when we asked you point blank. You told us, Mr. Hilton, you told Len that you had a bullet hole in your chest. And you told everyone in the I audience to have, have it on tape, Mr. Hilton. Uh, no, uh, I don't, don't have a bullet hole in my listen, chest. Uh, you uh, are diverse and manipulating liars. That's what you are. I was talking to Len. I told Len at one time that I had been shot. And I have been shot uh, right below the heart. I have a bullet that is inside me. But I was not, uh, I don't know who the hell you think I was shot by. I don't know exactly who I was shot by. Uh, they didn't give me any identification other than the bullet that they left in, in, in my side. You're not making any sense, Mr. Holder. Sorry, you're really, you're, you're hanging well, yourself yeah, right now. Well, well, you're, uh, then, then a crazy, a crazy, a loony toony like you uh, doesn't, uh, doesn't understand what sensible conversation is. You, you know, she, Sherry Kane doesn't claim to have a bullet hole anywhere in her body, nor does she claim what your friends are claiming, that she's an MI6 agent somehow infiltrated on behalf of Zionism. That's rude, Mr. Holder, to make MI6 like agent. that up and change your own stories. I didn't say that Sherry Kane was an MI6 agent. I don't even know whether I don't even know whether uh, whether she's a Mossad agent. Yeah, but you made those claims on their video. I did not you make those claims. Out, uh, I, I, yes, I you inferred all of that because was exactly the counterintelligence agent. propaganda that's been trying to discredit Sherry Kane, who literally has done more to expose the truth in what's happening in the infiltrations in the truth movements and the holistic healing movement, and all of the movements that we, the people, could advance for our own freedom. You and your colleagues discredit yourself just like you have done on this program today. For any reasonably intelligent listener, you have discredited yourself, and that is part of Co-Intel Pro. Where How every can get discredited. First of Everything all, and everyone first gets of all, discredited then, under this operation. And so nobody knows what to believe, all, then, and everybody's confused, uh, and have, it's also you don't, you don't seem to speak alone. You speak, seem to speak with a woman. You're always no, a woman. You're misogynist. I forgot. You did admit that on tape as well at the conspiracy what? conference. That's what you like to hit with. You, you're speaking with a woman. Yeah, See, the, women are lower. Yeah, women are lower. Anybody, 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 I'm a woman. I, you, you like to speak with a woman. No, you why, do you like, why do you like to bring gender you into this? Your what, what is your problem? What is your problem with women? You hate your mother that much. It's make, such a it's problem with women. Lies. Now, one is Sherry Kane, and one is Dr. Lynn Horowitz. I'm speaking alone. I intended to go on this show to speak about the criminal cabal that operates through the skull and bones. That's what we're talking about. Going from so then why don't we do that? Listen, guys. Listen, guys. Let me mediate this a little bit. Why don't we... No, no. You, you, uh, Lynn, uh, you're talking with a woman. She talks one moment, then you talk. It's like a tag team. Well, woman. Uh, you're talking with a woman. It's not another person. It's a woman. Why are you uh, such listen, a you can, you but where did you, ago, where did you learn right, how to... You, you complained just a moment ago because I called you a person. Okay, wait, wait, wait. You, 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 because I call you, you always a woman. like to put me down for being a woman. Let's, I'm let's, not call it. Listen, you're a liar. You, you admitted it. You admitted you were misogynist. We have it on tape. But the the man, the, the, you don't have a damn thing on tape that you. Yes, we do. We do. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. I swear to God, we have that. I was a member of the Central Intelligence Agency. You don't. I will. I will bet you any amount of money. Okay. But you do not have a tape of me telling you or anybody else on the planet Earth that I was a member of the Central. I have it on tape that you, that's you, that's you're, you're diverting. You're diverting. You have, we have on tape that you claimed that you were a sexist. You admitted it in front of the conspiracy conference people. And it's on tape. Are you going to deny that, Mr. Hilder? Deny, deny what? 
that you are a misogynist and you claimed you said it on tape at the conspiracy conference. What do you consider a misogynist? I said, did you not admit to being a misogynist at the conspiracy conference? Did you not admit, admit to it? Misogynist is a sexist. Somebody who looks down on women. A, a, a chauvinist. Man, a chauvinist. Uh, I, 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 wanted to, I wanted to get her opinion. Maybe I can get her opinion. If, if she asked me a question, maybe I can did, get... I asked you a question. Uh, maybe did I can, you maybe not I can give an answer from before you argument. answer for her. I asked you on the panel. I said to you, Mr. Hilder... Am I a sexist? Probably. You're, Probably, okay, so I'm, probably I'm a sexist. Sure, I think okay. I think most men are sexist in their kind of. No, I'm sorry. Are you a sexist, Howard? Can you answer? You're you're the person that's running this show. Are you a sexist? Because he well, claims that most men are sexist. Quite quite frankly, I I don't seem to be. Uh, I'm just you know I'm trying to put some uh, clarity into what we should be talking about here, and you guys just seem to be bickering back and forth and. Uh, over these well, issues. Well, I think the people should know. Are you a sexist? Because he's claiming that most people are sexist. Those men are sexist. Are you one? No, I. But, but you see, listen. Again, what well, this is, you know, what you're what you're actually doing and calling about is reminiscent of what you're supposedly accusing Mr. Hilder of. So, you know, the way I look at it is, all we've done for forty five minutes here is the, is you attack Mr. Hilder and he's defending himself and then calling you a liar, so he's attacking you. And we're here to talk about the Illuminati and the real controllers and getting the truth out. So if you ask anything, to me, it seems like a big distraction to what we were originally intended to do here. So well, why, what why do you want to talk about? Why don't we do that? Why don't we talk about what we were talking about, civil, and, and listen, you might, because you know, I, you know, I, I, I don't know how to, how to put this other than getting the information out that we're here to get out. And the reason I do this and I spend my time doing this is the same reason Mr. Hilder and the same reason you do it. You know, it's not it, uh, uh, supposedly for freedom, right? For liberty, for truth, okay? And to expose the criminal cartel that has hijacked our government, right? That's what we're here to do, okay? okay. okay. Let me just say with one stipulation. And, they, and the poison and in the foods and the poison me, in the can, sick vaccines. Can, Howard, can I please just make this one stipulation? Sure. I agree, okay. but here's the stipulation, that we do it professionally, as though we were in a court of law, because we're in a court of public opinion. And we should be well, um, we should have the material evidence to support what it is that we're making claims about. And the fact is that this is the problem with the discrediting that has gone on in our industry. And if we can't even on this phone call come to understand that the people that we rely on as leaders such as Mr. Hilder, to have him absolutely be certain that what he says is the truth, then we don't have anything but confusion, which is the reason for COINTELPRO and the reason why we the people have been completely Lynn, undermined. Lynn, Horowitz, Lynn, <laughs> Lynn uh, at one time I considered you uh, a friend or friendly. You said you that, Mr. Hilder. What made, else? You made statements about me that are completely, and about Ted Gunderson, and about uh, my friend Alex Jones, that are completely false. And obviously that's, you're doing that for a reason. So, so I have every, I, 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 I said about Alex Jones, I have documented. Are you, are you, listen, may I, listen, I'm, yeah, I'm please guys, you, give you each other time your, to talk. Shot at it. Are you now, or have you ever been, working for the Mossad? <laughs> and you said you actually no, no. It's, it's, it's a funny question because anyone who studies my work over many many years can see the uniqueness in which I have delivered scientific facts, and that's what I do because I have 36 scientific peer review publications to my credit, and in science, if you want to defend yourself and not be discredited, I'm then you have to have the material have evidence. You have to have the scientific research listen, reports to prove what it is that listen, you're saying. I don't have to defend myself. I don't have to defend myself because I'm not guilty of anything. Well, you look pretty but, but, guilty but, uh, when you, you made are, that video. You of have me. worked I with people and are working. Had... You have worked with and work with now, so far as I know, Ivy West. She was at your booth. Ivy is with a massive Zionist organization. 
<laughs> you know, again, I would like to believe that, and it may be true, honestly. It may be true. I don't know, because you know what? I've, I've been hoodwinked by a lot of people, including you and Mr. Gunderson. So if you showed me documented evidence that said Ivy West was a part of the opposition, I would say thank you, Anthony, because that helps me understand who my enemies are. But you haven't, and you don't. That's the problem. Uh, uh, you can, you see, basically, if, if you make statements enemy, such as the one you made about me that I'm untrustworthy, well, and you don't uh, have any back it up, man. Lynn, if Ivy West is, is your enemy, you hired him. <laughs> Anthony, I don't know that at this point because you know what? When you came out and attacked Ivy West, I was like blown out that Ivy West didn't defend herself. So I don't really know where Ivy West is at this point, quite frankly. And also, if you look at the video, anybody can go to your aircraft.org video and look yes. up the video of Let the Truth Be Told. He has a video. Hilda has a video he made of me. If you look underneath that video, you'll see the writings of Timothy Patrick White. Timothy Patrick White is a predicate felon who has also been busted for child pornography. And a I, don't know, about the I don't know. Uh, I don't know Mr. White. Okay. Because Mr. Gunderson, when, when this whole thing came up involving me in this 2007 claim that I was a Knight of Malta, it was done to discredit me by colleagues of yours that CC'd you and brought you into the discussion along with Mr. White and Mr. Well, have I. I ever, listen, have I ever said that you were a member of the Knights of Malta? Um, I don't know whether you have, but I know your no, colleagues, no, listen, you're, you're, Mr. Making, Gunderson, you're, you're making an involved with, yes. Have I ever said that you were a member of the Knights of Malta? Your best friend Gunderson did, though. Your best friend Gunderson did. It does, you don't have to say well, listen, it if all of your friends listen, are attacking us. Listen, Obviously, you never defended him. You never uh, defended Lynn. You never once came forward and wrote a statement Sherry, in defense of Lynn. Like the only you person that ever did that, Mr. Hilton, was me. This is crazy. I'm the only uh, person that ever right. came forward and did that. I saved well, that, Dr. Horowitz's life. You had no no part of that. As a matter of fact, uh, listen. If you if you'd like to hear me, dear, just stop for one moment and listen. I never said that your man friend, Dr. Horowitz, was a member of the Knights of Malta. I never said that. I don't know whether he was, he is, or he intends to be. I know none, none of that. And I never said it. And you're saying, well, because a friend of mine said something, I'm not responsible for everything that my friends say. Nor should my friends be responsible for anything that I say. I never said I was a member of the, of the uh, Council on Foreign Relations Central Intelligence Agency. Never. I never told that to Lynn. Lynn is lying. I said, Lynn, tell Robert Kassar and others who know you very well as friends in the old days where you told us that that was your truth. Now, again, I'm pretty naive about people, and that's the that's reality. Robert that's Kassar is, that's, is, that's, is a friend of mine. That, that's my weakness is that I trust people, and I trusted you on your word, which was simply that you had a bullet hole in your chest, and that that came from your service with CIA, and that you felt betrayed by the I agency. I never said, I, I was, told yeah, me, that was your story I was shot, that introduced me. Listen, I, I was shot in Koreatown. I was shot going into my house. There's there four fellows waiting for me across the street. I know none of their names. I just know that there was four men waiting for my arrival or my exit out of the house in Koreatown, at that which time I was shot. Did you file a police report, Mr. Hilder? Is there a police report that we can see why you were shot? It would be documented at the time. Well, you, I'm sure that you can go to the uh, to the police department and find out. <laughs> why would you? Why would you explain? At, 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 at the time I was shot, I was brought that, over to Cedars of Sinai. Anthony, why if if that's the case? And you now are saying you don't know whether it was CIA or not, or engaged in the CIA. I don't, I don't know whether I was shot by agents of the CIA, but I'm certainly not a member of the CIA, nor did I shoot myself. Well, well you know, too much. Arm, I was shot below the heart. I have a bullet in my body right now. 
Why did you associate that with your service to the CIA when I met you and why you discussed that I never, with Robert? I never, I, never, I never said that I was a member of the CIA. I would that's have to be crazy I, to tell you that if I was in the CIA. And then you denied on the panel. If I wasn't in the CIA, I certainly wouldn't have told you about it. Okay, and the then CIA, you denied on the have... panel. You denied on the panel. No, that's, that's, that's not the case. Is honestly, if you were a member of the CIA at one point, and then you said what you said, which was, I had a falling out with the agency. I no longer trust them, and I'm working independently as a filmmaker. And then you had told me that to have me respect you and honor you, which I did. That is the perfect way to infiltrate into my heart and into the other people's hearts who are trying to make a difference in the Patriot Movement and in the Truth Movement. Well, I ne I ne first of all, I never told you, Lynn, I never told you that I was a member of the Central Intelligence Agency, an agency yes, which did, I Anthony. despise. I never did. That's a complete and total lie. And then you no, and then you lied again, Lynn, and you Lynn, lied on the Lynn, panel Lynn, and said Lynn, you didn't Lynn, have a sibling on your chest. Right I have that on tape, Silder. I have it on tape. Yeah, yeah, please, stop the, please stop the overlap. Please stop the overlapping no, dialogue, guys. I have guys. it on tape that you said that you don't have a bullet hole in your chest when you were confronted with it. You said no, I don't have any bullet hole in my chest. Now you're saying that you have a bullet hole in your chest, and you're changing your story no, on how you got. No, you're, that, listen, if anybody is listening to this show, they can repeat, they can play this thing back. I didn't say I had a bullet hole in my chest. No, you did I, say it at I, the conference. In fact, you said that you want I, me to I, I set my shirt and show you? Man, here's what I said. You said, I don't have a bullet hole in my chest. I'm I, gonna, I can rip up my shirt now and show you. you guys, listen, you guys, are, you guys are on, uh, on some sort of wacko drug, or I don't know what's, what's wrong. Howard, come on, yeah. Anthony. Stay with the you, program here instead you know, of the slander. Just, Howard, listen, we'll be happy to show you today where Mr. Hilder actually said he doesn't have a bullet hole. You're trying to co-opt Howard's program. That's what you're doing. No, we're trying to get the truth out of what's happening, why, how the Illuminati is working with the grassroots of all the people. I've got a bullet. Insofar as the bullet hole, you said I said that I got a bullet hole in my chest. I don't have a bullet hole in my chest. I was hit. You just said you did. You said you have a bullet that went through your chest. You have a hole in your still in your body. No, I didn't say I had the bullet hole in my chest. I you said, have a, you I have a bullet in your body, you said, and it left the mark. Well, if, you, if, you if, you that, if, if you shut up for one second, I'll tell you what, what I said. You're going to tell me what I said. You're not going to tell me what I said. I know what I said, and I know what you said, and it's a lie. I, I was hit through the arm. Hit through, through the arm. It deflected the bullet. It went below my heart, and the bullet is still in me. And I don't know whether it's a... Uh, it looks like a 32, according to the uh, x-rays, but I have been shot. I have been hit, and whoever shot me intended to kill me. I will assure you that. And there's four people waiting for me. Obviously, they felt I was some sort of problem. Obviously, they felt that... Uh, the information that I was giving was something that should not be told to the world. I produced the Illuminati CFR records in 1967. I don't know when you became involved in this, Lynn. I don't know when you became involved in this, but it certainly wasn't when I became involved in it. I am the first individual in the world to put the expose of the Illuminati on recorded tape. Obviously, some people who are against the people of the world and are who are in favor of the Illuminati did not want that information out. Here's, here's another thing. On the chemtrail site that you have that video posted about me slandering and libeling me because I exposed you and your buddies. Under there, you have the writings of Timothy Patrick White, which is really wild that you say you're not associated with him because anybody that tries to post anything positive about me on that site is 
removed. Any comments that are removed, if they're posted and they're positive about me, they're all removed. The only people that you have that are allowed to post on that site are people that we have exposed as part of the COINTELPRO group of, of people that have been attacking us. So you allow the believe same it, group Believe it or people. not, I don't, uh, even though I have several sites, not just one, I've got six, but on any of the six, I don't control what information come, goes on there. Okay. Somebody, somebody, does. somebody does that works with you because every time anybody tries to post a comment in, about me on there that's a positive comment, but it frankly, gets deleted. Sherry, frankly, Sherry, I don't give a damn about you. I don't well, care about you. Anthony, I would never, you have, know, never have reason to talk about you. Well, uh, when, when you made a video when, about me. When, what? It, but, Anthony, there, you, there, you there, was a video, there was times. an attack video. There was an attack video launched by you guys against me. Excuse me. The first thing response, that we wanted and, and, to and whatever I have on my site is in response. I sat down in front of a camera and responded to the attack upon me. Okay, Anthony. The reality is that you filmed me three times, and you wanted to film me a fourth time on the chemtrail matter and the chemtrail issues because of my book, Death in the Air. The, the reality is that you really didn't need any more filming of me, and you could have somewhere on that site, if you supported me and you appreciated our friendship and what I gave to you from my heart for we the people, all the information that I had about the chemtrails, you should have or would have, if you were my friend and wanted to do the public service, a video of me, but instead. You have Timothy Patrick White and others who slander and libel Sherry Wait, Kane, uh, do I have and you have a video that is when, absolutely you discrediting when, of you. It when, discredits you to have when, you go on and, I don't have, and have a, a, a talking Lynn. head. First of all, you said another lie. Like you, Lynn, you just said another lie. You said I, I, I have uh, Timothy Patrick White on film. No, well, I didn't. Did I said it's in writing. Sherry Kane stated that Timothy Patrick's White's posting under the video is there and it's real. This is a predicate felon. He is well known to be a cross-dresser, which, by the way, J. Edgar Hoover, now it's all over. It's public knowledge, was a cross-dresser, heavily involved in some very, very bizarre behaviors, including, it appears to be, this whole pedophile issue that he was involved in with all those, like, Franklin cover-up cronies involved and Washington, Capitol Hill, and elsewhere. The judges, the lawyers that he held all of the files on and blackmailed and kept in line, these guys were involved in the child sex trafficking well, arena. I don't, Ted Thunderson uh, and uh, your friend were involved know, in. I do not know, have never met, or ever spoke to J. Edgar Hoover. My friend, my very close friend for 35 years, Ted L. Gunderson, spoke to, worked for, and with uh, J. Edgar Hoover. He told me, insofar as the best that uh, uh, Ted at one time said that uh, he, look, I'm a fairly good looking guy, Ted, uh, that uh, J. Edgar Hoover never made any pass against me, and I believe him. Uh, as it turns out, Ted Gunderson was poisoned with arsenic poisoning and died. There's no one I know on the planet Earth that hated Ted Gunderson as much as both of you guys. And the agency that he worked for, at one time the FBI, was working against him, as was the Central Intelligence Agency. Now, I don't, I, listen, I'm, not, I'm certainly not accusing you of being involved with anybody that poisoned Ted Gunderson and brought about his death. I don't know that. And I'm not going to state that. So, I know that you have a concerted, heavy program that has been launched against Ted L. Gunderson, former head of the FBI in Los Angeles, Dallas, and Memphis, and myself and Ted just spoke out against uh, the pedophiles. He spoke out uh, against people who uh, have waged war against the United States. And I know that Ted is, was, 
and shall forever, in my mind, be one of the, the greatest retired lawmen in the history of the United States of America. You speak out against Alex Jones. You speak out against me, and you speak out against Ted Gunderson. And Hello? Are you still there? All right, the call dropped for a second, ladies and gentlemen. The Skype will just get it back. Uh, those of you watching on live stream, just have patience. Uh, to try to get the call back. Um, everyone there? Okay, yeah, sorry, like we, we lost uh, we lost the Skype for a second. Everyone's yeah. back. Snap to a Slim Jim. Oh, yeah. Okay. Is everyone there? Yes, this is Anthony. I lost you. I'm sorry. I don't know what happened. Uh, that's insane, uh, Anthony. I, can you hear me? Yes, I, I can. Um... I, you know, I, I, you know what I think about this whole situation. I mean, I, I've done so much research, and I mean, I just can't even. I just, you know, talk about uh, a hit piece. Um, I'm sure they're going to say that I work for the FBI and the CIA, and we're working together in a plot to uh, confuse America. <laughs> I mean, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I was thinking they were going to go after you. Uh, I'm surprised ask, they didn't. Uh, can I ask a question, uh, Howard? This is Ronnie Bennick from Outside the Margins. who will be um, on everybody uh, at 8 p.m. after uh, after We Are Change with uh, Howard Nima and uh, Vinny B. The Truth. Uh, yo, go ahead, Ronnie, please. <laughs> oh, thank you. Um, <clears throat> I was just asking a question that I uh, uh, in this country, in Australia, our our, our pedophiles are. Um, Pretty much have uh, uh, made to uh, register, so they can't live in any anywhere near a school. They can't participate anywhere near uh, children. Um, do you have a similar register in the U.S.? Oh yes, uh, yes, there is. There is such a thing. Oh yeah. Oh, uh, that that is a, a good thing. Um, my family was actually inflicted by this, uh, um, um, you know, <laughs> with my daughter, and um, it, 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 a bruises, um, actually bruising is not the word for it, um, because it's beyond a uh, bruising. It's it, trauma, it's lifetime traumatization, it's, it's permanent damage, it's permanent damage. Uh, Ted Gunderson was the, possibly the leading uh, expose, ex, expose of um, pedophiles in the United States of America. Yeah, I, I did all my research, and a lot of the stuff that he's on, it's right on. DynCorp Corporation is evil. Um, they're, they, they just work to shuttle uh, dignitaries. They shuttle 9-11 um, hijackers and, and perpetrators out of the country. Uh, there, you know, it's just unbelievable. Our government, unfortunately, has been hijacked as, as we're trying to alert the people. And um, I just know that for 50 minutes we were talking over an, almost an hour. We were talking about nothing that has to do with what's really going on here. And it's Howard, sort of. I beg to defer, Howard. I beg to defer on that one because I'm we sorry. were talking about how the government is being hijacked on a grassroots level. And Mr. Ted Gunderson, if anybody went to him and said that their child was missing because that was his role with the FBI in charge of the missing children and helping the parents find them, if anybody went to them, it was a dead end. He was a double agent. Nobody was able to find their child if they went to Ted Gunderson. Ted Gunderson was involved in many, many hideous crimes 
We have exposed Ted Gunderson for his involvement in not helping the children well, at all, in being involved Ted, in child uh, sex trafficking, Ted, in being Ted involved in protecting here. pedophiles. Uh, Ted is not here, so I will speak on behalf of my friend who's not here and has been murdered. He hasn't murdered been murdered. He died of cancer. I thought, I thought that he died of cancer. This yes. is the first time I've heard that he was poisoned. Yes. No, uh, he, was in the, he was in the hospital and dying of cancer, and I've had Dr. Uh, Edgar Lucidi tell me that in examining the body and uh, uh, taking, observing carefully that his fingers, his thumbs had become black. Uh, upon death, his body became blackened. Uh, Ted had talked to me uh, about being poisoned by arsenic prior to his death, and this is when he was going down to uh, uh, visit a friend of his who was uh, in prison in uh, California, at Terminal Island. Uh, I, uh, I did not pay much attention to it. I didn't give it much credence, but he said that... Uh, he had found arsenic on his steering wheel and on his um, seat in his truck. Um, I don't know. There's, uh, the information that I got from Dr. Lucidi is that Ted had been poisoned. Yes, he was dying of cancer, and the arsenic apparently brings out some form of cancer. I'm not a doctor. I can't uh, state that for a fact. I can only state that uh, in listening to him. And I've got great faith in Dr. Edgar Lucidi. More faith in the Dr. Edgar Lucidi than I do a, re a retired dentist. Oh, well, you know what? I also have so many publications in scientific peer review beyond that, Mr. Hilder. It's, again, it's a discrediting thing that you were, are, are stating here that is irrelevant. The fact is, is that Mr. Gunderson, it's, 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 it's all over the internet now. Mr. Mr. Gunderson had interviewed by Geraldo. Let's go back to the meeting. Mr. Gunderson was interviewed by Geraldo Rivera along with Michael Aquino, the director of the Church of Satan, Temple of Set, on this issue that we're talking about, pedophile issue. And again, it's a standard psychological operation. When anybody looks at the good cop, bad cop on that video and then sees Mr. Geraldo Rivera's rise in fame and fortune associated with being a media celebrity, the way that that was treated was a standard co-intel cooperation, where just like this program that Howard's upset about and thinks that it's not serving anything, frankly, it's kind of like confused everything. That's what Mr. Gunderson did. That's what Mr. Gunderson did, not, did with the Central Set, National Security, well, NSA know. General, Mike Latino. Howard is making correct statements based upon information that he has gathered. Look, look, at, as a, hey, Abby, as who, a who is Michael Aquino? Who is Michael what? Aquino? Please say, who, who is Michael Aquino? I have never interviewed Michael Aquino, but I interviewed the, his assistant. Who, who is he? I, uh, Michael Aquino was heading up the satanic uh, religion, if you will, and for the U.S. military, and yes, the U.S. military did pay, did pay for uh, the protection of that particular religion. They had the First Church of Satan in San Francisco. Okay, great. That's exactly that is true. And, now, and, and, what, I, had, and I, what, had, what, I, I, I've interviewed a fellow who worked for him in the in the U.S. military. Okay, so that's and true. What's his role? Being with Ted Gunderson on a television program with Geraldo Rivera, talking about Howard. I have a question. Talking about Howard. That, 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 that has absolutely nothing to do with the, the, the uh, topic that Howard. It has everything to do with pedophilia and controlling the American public's mind. It's the media, Mr. Hilder, that you're engaged in. How can you say it has nothing to do with the topic? I have a question for Mr. Hilder, please. Go ahead, please. Who's, who's calling? Who's calling? This is Josh. This is Josh. Okay, Josh. Uh, hey, Josh. Uh, Mr. Hilder, uh, what are your thoughts on Rick? Mr.
What's happening? Hey, what's going on? Okay, is everyone okay? I don't know what that was. Anthony, are you still yeah. there? Everybody out there? Is everybody out there? Hello? I can hear you, Howard. Yeah, okay, we're Ronnie. All, all did we did we lose did we lose Anthony? Uh yes, seems so. All right. Uh, let me see if I can get him back. Ed, are you there? Uh, let's see. Whole thing is just uh, very, very um, intense. Is the right word to use? Um, let me see if I can get Mr. Hilder back. I'm here. Uh, the network seems to be a, a little unstable, but uh, we're uh, rectifying this uh, uh, back end technical problems, maybe. Or I, I actually think it's Skype right now. It is probably the Skype. Um, I definitely would like to uh, try to get back to Mr. Uh, Mr. Hilder. If he hopefully he'll call in again, and we can. Uh, really uh, turn to task here. Hey Truth, what's going on? I see you over there. Or I see your room. Yeah, I got my cam on. <laughs> All right. Um, you have his number in, there? In the, main, in the meantime, and guys, while uh, we're waiting uh, for him to come back, uh, and while you guys are trying to get him back, um, what is this about the uh, March 2013 chip insertion? Chip insertion? What? I didn't hear about this, Ronnie. Oh, you haven't been watching my wall, Howard. I don't know. I must not have. Not today. I had, unfortunately, I had to work for the slaves today. I had to be a slave. You've reached three, one, oh. Okay, wait a minute. Hello? Yes, Mr. Hilder. Hello? Are we on there? Somebody's playing music. It's really weird. Yeah. That's getting, not good. Getting some, getting some, some uh, unknown, anyway, unknown jokers. Anyway, back to what, uh, back to what I was saying. I'm back uh, on Howard. Howard. Oh, okay, Anthony, oh. go, go ahead, Ronnie. Just finish your thought I, I, there. I, I, I'm gonna uh, shush my mouth, and we'll we'll take this up as another topic later. But I'm um, back to your program. Okay, excellent. And now again was Ronnie Bannock of Outside the Margin, who will be on at 8 p.m. today. And again, we're joined by uh, Anthony Hilder. You back, Anthony? Yes, I want to say that I, I'm a very close friend of a fellow who's the leading anti-pedophile and the child molestation that goes on in England. And uh, his name is Brian Garish. He's with the Lawful Rebellion in England, in the UK. And uh, I have done several, I've done one movie with him called The EU, Hitler's Dream Come True. Um, I don't know. I guess maybe uh, uh, Sherry and uh, Dr. Horowitz was waiting for me in the <laughs> that which is perfectly all right because I'll have that discussion any day. Um, I just would like to, uh, Dr. Horowitz to take a lie detector test, saying that he that I told him that I was in the CIA, and I will take a lie detector test, saying that I am not or never was, I never intend to be. Uh, so, that would solve that problem. Um, well, you know something, Anthony? Um, I would... No, I was going to say, what? What, I, what I was saying, Anthony, is uh, it, it's just like what... You know, I, I don't understand. I've, I've researched your work. I've researched Alex Jones's work. And there's so much disinformation that's mixed in there that, um, you know, you got to look at what the... What the, the the effort, the work, and what the information is. If the information's false, sure, but it's real, it's true. I mean, a cabal of bankers have hijacked our, our government, 
bought into the biggest corporations like Monsanto, who now and now Bill Gates and his eugenics. I mean, it's just we are being attacked, like you said, and the, for the, I feel like well, like there, I, there's a there's a concerted effort, Howard. And it's being conducted against myself, against Alex Jones, and against Dr. Leonard Horowitz. Uh, I know Alex Jones. He is a friend of mine. He has been a friend of mine. He shall continue to be a friend of mine. Uh, he tries his very best to get the information, and it's massive, out to the public in an effort to save the population of the world, the integrity, the sobriety, the sensibility of those living on the planet. He wants to save the sovereignty and the independent and uh, liberty of those living on the planet. He's against the eugenics movement. Obviously, I am against the eugenics movement. And the... Uh, Margaret Sangers, <laughs> the individuals who want to reduce the population like Ted, the terrible Turner, by 19 out of 20 people. Uh, I've always liked Dr. Horowitz. I never had any reason to dislike Dr. Horowitz until the attack upon me has come, and it's a lie. Um, I would love for him to take a lie detector test. I would be happy to do that. And if he's still listening or he can listen to this show, I would hope that he would take a lie detector test and I'll do the same. We'll find out who's lying. Uh, Dr. Horowitz's books have been rather good. I haven't read the one on the, uh, uh, the five, three, whatever he says it was, or says it is. I haven't read that. I don't know the, the, the chiming or the, the rhyming or a lot of the stuff that he's talking about there. But the other things on uh, uh, the material in the sky that's being dropped upon us, what he has to say, is certainly uh, worth reading, and I would recommend that. In fact, even though he's not here, and he can't, maybe you can't hear me, but uh, I would recommend his books, with, other than the one, the, at least the ones that I have read. You can ask me, and the ones that I have read, and I found out to be of value. I would continue to do that. I met Glenn when he was uh, married. Uh, I liked the, the lady that he was married to. Um, I uh, remember telling, uh, when I walked in, I said, uh, oh, there's Lynn. I'll, I'll get a little, pick up a little piece uh, of uh, information, uh, the new, maybe a new piece of information, 60 seconds, he was busy. And I thought, uh, oh, I'll talk to him. Um, I saw over in his booth uh, a woman named Ivy West. Have I suspicion that Ivy West might be engaged with a group that is Mossad? Yes. Do I know that? No. But indications would be that that would be uh, appropriate of an investigation. I love the people of the planet. I love most of them, but there are those who want to reduce the population of the planet by, like Ted Gunderson, like uh, Ted Gunderson was exposing, uh, like Ted the Terrible Turner wants to reduce the population by 19 out of 20. The same thing goes for the Gates' group. Jacques Cousteau, 350,000 a day, Anthony. Jacques Cousteau, 350,000 a day. That's right. There's many of them, and they, and they see nothing so, wrong with it. They see nothing wrong with it. They're, they're, this is like, you know, they're just, this is just a problem. You know, this is just the way it is. Well, Dr. Ed Spencer and I have been working on a film. In fact, you can go on the web right now. Go to uh, uh, commoncrime.net, and you'll be able to pull down this piece on... Uh, Smart murder meters, and it's called electrofrying, F R Y I N G, electrofrying San Francisco. It's a, I believe, an excellent piece, but you might have a different opinion. So, uh, would I suggest you go to that? Yes. Uh, 
Dr. Ed Spencer is telling the truth. I find him to be telling the truth as often as uh, uh, Dr. Horowitz tells lies. And would I say that? I don't know why he would do that. Uh, is he influenced by the Mossad? Uh, uh, Dr. Horowitz, to the best of my knowledge, is, uh, is, is, uh, is a Christian. He was born Jewish and became a Christian. Sherry Kane is, is Jewish. But uh, I think that Sherry Kane is uh, an excellent uh, Mossad agent. I don't know. I really don't. Uh, a bit wacky, possibly, but uh, uh, Mossad agent, I don't know. Did I ever say that she was part of MI6? No. Why would I say that? I don't know anything of that kind. But I do know that there's a reason that they're out against uh, Alex Jones. We're out against my good friend and close compatriot ally, Ted L. Gunderson with the FBI, and uh, against uh, me. So, um, It's just I unbelievable because... For those maybe maybe uh, uh, Horowitz has just gone like some. What is it? There was a doctor. Uh, there's a fellow Sherlock Holmes, wasn't he? Uh, said to have taken opium. That was his favorite cocktail. I don't know, but uh, Doctor Ed Spencer is right on target, completely, 100 percent, thoroughly. And uh, I'm uh, totally in support of him and uh, our projects that we work on together. Well, again, you know, you, your work is so important, and I, I don't know, I, I just, uh, I, I, I ask the people out there to, to look at a man, and it's just like the same people that, that bash Ron Paul. They call him a Mason, they say that he's a Luciferian, and I don't see the evidence of this. I see a lot of I like to see a lot of information about it. I see a lot of uh, propaganda that he's you know, but he's the only one that's talking about truth and liberty. So what is that? So draw your own conclusions, like like uh, Leonard said. You know, if you're use your own judgment, your own thoughts, right? Well, Leonard brought up uh, Dr. Robert Kassar, who's a friend of mine, has been. And my knowledge is now and will always be. Uh, we've worked together on a film called uh, Ten Dollars a Gallon. Uh, he's one of the brightest individuals that I have met anywhere at any time in my history on this planet Earth. Great, great guy. And he's, he's done all sorts of things to try to change the, uh, uh, the health of the planet. Uh, totally absolutely correct on most everything I've ever heard him say. I don't, I can't remember him going off base on anything. But Dr. Uh, Robert Kassar is just one of the best. He's uh, physically, he's like the, the Tarzan, Tarzan in California. Uh, not an ounce of fat on him and uh, it's always searching for the truth in every uh, area of the world that he uh, lives in, and uh, just a genuine guy. Proud of him, proud of uh, Gunderson, proud of uh, Alex Jones, and uh, certainly proud of uh, Dr. Uh, Ed Spencer. Yeah, Dr. Spencer so, and I uh, spent some time talking earlier before air, and uh, he's got a lot. I mean, his the, it's just it is true the whole enchilada. He's uh, he's so knowledgeable. We were talking about the mysteries of Babylon, and not just, of course, the fact that he's a neurologist from Yale University and went to Stanford. You know, it's just amazing. Well, Dr. Spencer talks about uh, you know the guys behind the scenes. Uh, we've talked about uh, the Zion Nazi. And is the Zion Nazi Jews? No. The Zion Nazi are actually anti-Semitic. Correct. Jews are Semitic. Arabs are Semitic. The Zion Nazis are against the Semites. And the Zion Nazis want to rule the world. That's nothing new, so we call them Nazi-like. And uh, 
Would I like to see the Zion Nazis put on trial for crimes against humanity? Absolutely. Somebody has to do an expose, and I would like to uh, engage my friend in working with me to expose them for what they have done, what they are doing. And uh, do I think that uh, the uh, Hor Horowitz and his uh, companion is involved in some of that stuff? Are they influenced by the uh, Zion Nazis? Uh, Possibly. I don't know. I, I actually Possibly. believe, uh, Anthony, I actually believe that they believe their position, but, you know, it doesn't mean that they're not, you know, I, I don't know how else to put it. I mean, when people demonize people, um, they tend to almost, like, talk themselves into believing anything. Uh, you know, I've done research on this. I mean, it's funny because, you know, you, Fritz Springmeier was on, you know, the whole idea of the how the Illuminati create a, um, a mind-controlled slave uh, an undetectable mind control slave with compartmentalized torture and putting these brains, you know, by using traumatic torture and different things. So you never know what people, who be, where they come from. You never know. One day somebody was away on a vacation uh, that, and they come back and they're a different, and they've been programmed. It really uh, happens. Do I believe that Dr. Leonard Horowitz is, is, is insincere? No, no, no. I I'm, believe he is sincere. Yeah, that's what I I'm believe saying. believe that he, uh, I even believe that he believes that he told me, uh, well, when he told me that uh, I told him I was in the CIA. But that's silly he, to say that you were in the I CIA. Know, it's, 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 it's totally incorrect. It's nuts. Yeah. But I, but I don't think he's, I don't think he's crazy. He probably believes it. I know that Dr. Frankenstein was sincere when he attempted, the legendary Dr. Frankenstein, to create a, beer, a, a being that would be superior. Do I think Dr. Frankenstein was insincere? Absolutely not. I believe the legendary Dr. Frankenstein thought of himself as sincere. And that was his program. And I, I believe that uh, Dr. Horowitz thinks of himself as sincere. Am I do I think that he's a Dr. Frankenstein? No, not at all. It's just I think that... He's, 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 I, th I, th I think he's confused, and uh, the boy has some problems. Well, Anthony, I, I mean... Would like, I would like... Yes. No, I was saying, I, I really, I, again, it's just, it was just such a, to me, the, my, my interpretation of this whole situation is just a diversion. Um, a, a, actually, like a tactic, you know, and, and, and all I wanted to do was talk about things that I've researched and know to be true, and have you tell the folks your experiences and what you've done and how they, look, every time we try to do something with certain individuals, I have problems with stream, I have problems with getting online, they tap the phones, they do all sorts of shit. All sorts of shit. So, I'm supposed to think that, um... Uh, Howard, you know, you know that the military have been employed to, uh, you know, to get rid of, uh, people like us. I know that. And what's interesting, Ronnie, is you had that great guest on that was from the military intelligence. What was his name again? The guy that, with the, with the um, with the television programming through, he, he worked for the, uh... What was his name the other night? Oh, uh, Jeff, Jeff Harvey. Jeff Harvey. Uh, a a uh, Anthony, we had Jeff Harvey on, uh, on, on. Actually, it was on Ronnie's show, which is Outside the Margins at 8 p.m. Uh, tonight. Uh, and he was going over all of how he was a, a computer a whiz programmer. And he's showing how TV is programming people, programming us. You know, real truth. Hey, Howard. Yes. Dr. Spencer? Howard, it's Hank. Oh, Hank. How are hey, you? Hey, what's going on? What's going on? I'm great. I'm great. Um, you know what? I can't hear anybody else. All I can hear is you now. You only hear it on my, on my phone before I can hear everything. Well, we want to rectify that. We want to rectify that wrong and get the, um, Howard heard uh, throughout the planet. Uh, okay. As I'm told, All right. Now, now uh, I can hear everybody. The show, re the, the show reaches uh, across the planet Earth. It does. And uh, you know, Sherry said that one time uh, uh, at that uh, one of the uh, these meetings, she's oh, I'm Jewish. I, I have I said, a no, question. I'm not, 
Jewish, but I but I have I have a, an uncle that I call Uncle Arthur, Uncle Arthur Bard. He was Jewish. And she said, "Well, you're Jewish." You know, I said, "No, I, I'm not Jewish, but I'm I have nothing against anyone being Jewish. It's fine. I've got several friends who are Jewish. One is named Ken, a great researcher, but." Uh, she said, "No, no, you're Jewish. You're just you're 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 a self-denying Jew." I said, "I'm not a self-denying Jew. I'm Christian." But she insists upon taking something out of context, making something else, and I am concerned about uh, Dr. Horowitz. Uh, I knew his wife. You know, I liked her. Uh, Lynn is a pretty nice guy. You get to know him. He's a pretty nice guy. And uh, his books, pretty good, pretty damn good read. Um, do I think he's insincere? No, I think he's very sincere. And uh, I have nothing bad to say about him. I'm certainly not going to lie about him. What I do, uh, except uh, I, I will expose the lies that he uh, is saying about me and Alex Jones and uh, Ted Gunderson. But you, the, you're a new caller on here, and uh, I'm speaking, and it's, it's your turn, my friend. Hank, yes, you had a question Thank for you. for Mr. Hilder. Hey, yeah, my question is, I, I, I noticed that you said that I do I do want, I do listen to the show, and I do notice that you have a lot of problems, and the show gets shut down, and uh, it seems like the, the only time there was a problem with the show was when Dr. Horowitz was on, and we were, he was asking a question, and they wanted to know about a person and all, all I kind of got out of it was uh, what does that have to do with anything? So I guess my question is what's the answer to that question? The one that he said, that why, what does that have to do with anything? And then we lost stuff. I, I, I think maybe we were getting somewhere there. Uh, where, whereabouts? I mean, I'm dead. Well, maybe, maybe Lynn Horowitz is listening. If, if, if Lynn, you're listening, please call back into the show. Uh, I don't know why my conversation is because the phone went dead, and I certainly uh, would like to have uh, you have an opportunity to to speak. Uh, uh, maybe if you're you're not getting in the inf even with, between you and uh, Sherry combined, uh, you try to you know. Well, I'm thinking, yeah, maybe we'll do. I think, yeah, well, this is also that's perfectly all right. It's perfectly all right. Just uh, call back in and. Uh, uh, hell, I'll you know hang up and let you guys do your thing, and I you'll see a movie. You know what? That's that's probably not. It's not the time or the place that this is actually your interview. So I'm gonna let, let that whole thing go, and then maybe we can set up something another time and get all three of you guys on it. You know, for another show, that'd be great. And then everybody can bring their points to the table. You know, because yeah, it was it's sort of like an ambush. So. Absolutely, yeah, I, there's, there's I really no benefit, feel like it was no benefit to yeah. me talking to uh, Cherry Kane and uh, and Horowitz because uh, uh, they tried to uh, they went to the conspiracy con, uh, and there's some people there that believe them. There's uh, many who don't, uh, but uh, that's the time for for another program. Uh, it's Howard's show. What do you want to do, Howard? Yeah, very much so. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to, uh, again, just uh, let's try to get this on target. Now, we were talking about, we started to talk about the Skull and Bones. We started to talk about the Illuminati. And right now, I think since there's, you know, just about 20 minutes left, look what's happened since 9-11, everybody. And I, I would like Mr. Hilder, of course, who's very knowledgeable on, on the, the, this false flag event, but look at how these people have to have awoken so we've made some progress but look at how resistant they are to the truth we get our truth the truth is always being attacked anything that's true is attacked um, it's just not it's 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 since 9-11 we have the Patriot Act now we have the National Defense Authorization Act 1031 1032 that makes anybody can just be taken away rendition it's it's Stasi um, I have now called the, the, the new head of Homeland Security. I give her a new name. Her name is now Sister Stasi. So if that gets out on the Internet, I created it. Sister Stasi is the big brother, whatever you want to call it. And I'm just really goddamn angry that a lot of this, I mean, you know, debate is good. People have opinions. That's what, that's what freedom of speech is about. We know they want to shut that down. 
So I'm not against that, but I really do want well, to. The Patriot Act is the the what is called the Patriot Act was in, initiated by Adolf Hitler. Yes, it's the Enabling Act. It's the Enabling Act. That's right. It's ex it's to the letter, and it's the damn same thing. It's the Reichstag fire. Same. They they just doing the so same playbook. They down the Reichstag, then they said, well, it's you know, hell, it's got to be the, the Jews, or it's got to be uh, the Poles, or the else. When, it, as a matter of fact, it was uh, simply an agent of the uh, Rothschilds and the Rockefellers of of the Rothschilds and the Rockefellers. Uh, and uh, the Zionazis, uh, as I would see it, because they tried to create the war and were successful in doing so. They're trying to create another war, once again, with the, uh, with the Iranians and the Syrians. All of the wars that are being conducted against the Arab nations in the Mideast, all of them, as so far as I know, are created by the Central Intelligence Agency. Definitely. It's done with American money. It's, it's done for the purpose of getting uh, the, the nations of the world to support Israel. But they're not, not, not the, the little Jews, no. But they we're talking about the Zionazis. They have a program to bring about a new world order and reduce the population of the planet by 95%. It's not a mystery. You take a look at all of the activities in Syria. This is being conducted by rebels in Syria to go against... Oh, somebody's Italy. chewing there, man. Please, somebody but chew the... Go Whoever's got the uh, mic going there, can you mute it, please? Sorry. Go ahead, Anthony. I'm sorry. There's somebody had their mic on and they're, uh, they're chewing. <laughs> I apologize, Anthony. Go on. Syria. So uh, what I see right now is that there's an attempted war by agents or apparatchiks of this government in Israel to bring about a world war, a world war three. And we have an opportunity to change that. Shows like this has an opportunity to change it. Uh, in spite of the flack that you may get uh, from uh, individuals who will, who will call in or the I don't know why the Hor Horowitz and uh, his, uh, his girlfriend were on tonight, but uh, they're apparently waiting. That's fine. That's fine. Bring them on. Bring them all on. The expose of the enemy, whomever you perce uh, perceive it to be, is good. Which you'll find out in the long run as you do some investigation. Uh, it's not just who's right and who's wrong, but what's right and what's wrong. And certainly World War is not a program that I endorse. Exactly. I am totally opposed, as uh, Ted and uh, <coughs> Alex Jones, to any such thing. If you listen to Alex on a daily basis, you'll find out that he's 100% on target. Always taking aim at the, uh, the eye of the octopus, in this particular case, the eye of the Illuminati. I did a piece which uh, just came out in my, on my television show, which is called... Paradigm Shift TV on Sky TV. Well, it's, it's, called, it, oh, it's, it's called Paradigm Shift TV, but I'm just thinking, it, it's, uh, it's called an expose. It, it's, it's called an expose program. It's called a revelation, revelationary program like uh, Alex Jones, yes, Paradigm Shift TV, mm -hmm. that goes out on Sky TV. Sky TV is actually owned by Rupert Murdoch. And oh, I you're definitely no, going to tell Pro. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I have, I have no... <laughs> <laughs> I have no... No, uh, you know... No uh, control over that. For, uh, uh, for any of these individuals with, uh, with Fox, <laughs> and I take a look at them as... Uh, uh, agent provocateurs uh, for the uh, CIA or their brand of, uh, of propaganda, which goes around the world. So uh, it's Paradigm Shift TV, and it's on Sky TV throughout England, throughout the UK. We're on uh, 10 million satellite dishes, however, 
I'm sure we don't have 10 million satellite listeners, but I'm happy that we're on, and uh, I'm delighted that uh, we're on here on the air. I don't know how many people actually listen to the program, but whatever. I don't care whether it's 10 or 10 million. Exactly. If you're listening to the program, you're trying to find out something that other programs and other channels don't put on. So your heart's in the right direction. Even when Lynn said, well, my heart's in the right direction, I believe his heart is in the right direction. I believe that. Is he influenced by some, by the Zionazis or Illuminazis uh, out there? I don't know. Um, uh, I actually feel sort of sorry, sorry for the guy. He's done a lot of good work, and uh, we shouldn't discount that. Don't throw out the baby with the bathwater. Right. Well, you know, we have and, all this. Uh, our film, our films, uh, I would say, take a look at them. Aircraft.org. Frankenfed. Commoncrime.net. Uh, we're talking about a war that's being waged against us from the air. The dropping of nanoparticulates uh, containing strontium, barium, arsenic, uh, sulfur hexafluorides, aluminum oxides. Yes, that's being done to us on a daily basis. It's being done with monies that are taken from us by force to buy these toxins to drop upon us, to kill us, to cripple us, to bring us down to a position where we are controlled or controllable. There has to be a, an exposure of this. Dr. Ed Spencer is doing it. Uh, my friend Dr. Robert Kassar has been doing it for years. And there are a lot of other individuals like Dr. Edgar Lucidi, Dr. Privatira, a lot of people, both uh, in medicine and simply uh, engineers or technicians who understand that the, the smart meter is a class 2B carcinogen, carcinogen. When you put one of these things into your house or allow it into your house, you're subject to coming down with cancer. But, you know, only a small brain cancer or a small breast cancer, or if you're a man, in the testicles. Am I opposed to it? Absolutely. Should we make films about it? Yes. We've got this other film that just came out, Smart Murder Meters. Um, Electrofrying, F-R-Y-I-N-G, Electrofrying, set in Francisco. Dr. Ed Spencer is on that, doing a hell of a job. We'll be coming back for more and more and more. Um, what can we do to help your program? My friend, we'll certainly be willing to advertise it on uh, Paradigm Shift TV and uh, with all of the other affiliates that we have. Well, thank so you, Howard, sir. tell us how. Tell the people how uh, we can help. Well, you can all help again by, uh, you know, the organization is actually WeAreChangeCT.org. That is uh, the We Are Change Connecticut. Um, we are, uh, again, an, an, to basically a to Nonprofit organization for change. Um, that is the main website. We are changect.org owns informedradio.com. So we definitely would like to, of course, yeah, informed radio is 24 hour truth talk radio. We have some great people here working behind us, some great shows. And then also, of course, we're going to have um, the uh, live stream channels, which we have affiliations with unitedtruthseekers.com. And also, Death to the New World Order, that's D2NWO.com, also great truth. And down the pike, we're uh, also going to be um, launching with some other of these truth networks that we have, the Truth Video Broadcasting Network, dot TV, which will be coming soon. Would you, would you like to send all of that information to uh, our webmasters Absolutely. so that they can uh, put this on our sites? Of course. I would appreciate that. Oh, of course, Anthony, of course. And again, you know, um, truth is the key to this whole thing, and, and, and spreading this information as much as we can 
Um, I, I, I just, I, I really, I had so much to talk about and we have so little time. I'm hoping that we can, uh, without being ambushed again, uh, maybe I'll just make certain that I, see, I leave the phones open. Uh, maybe that was the biggest mistake. We, I certainly don't like being, uh, necessarily attacked like this, um, without, you know, sort of like from the side. Um, I, I really don't appreciate it personally as a broadcaster. Um, I, I'm not trying to spread any disinformation. I'm not trying to take sides. It's just common courtesy that um, I had a, a, a guest here that was going to put his side. If you wanted to side of the story, you wanted to get on and decide about your, your side of the story and, and debate it, that's fine. But all that was was an on-off, on-air assault. And I, I really honestly take offense to it. Um, I, I didn't want to interrupt it because Mr. Hilder was clearly defending himself. But um, in, in the future, if anyone wants to debate somebody and call them liars or have evidence against them uh... let let's let's have the opportunity to uh... to to do this in a in a in a proper manner um, and and in the future with anybody because i'm assuming that there will be other guests that are controversial uh... the truth movement i i and again i'm trying to try to uh, attract as many of the people that are that are knowledgeable and people that i look to that i personally have done the research that i endorse okay so I, I don't care what anybody says about Anthony J. Hilder. His work has changed my life. Uh, Aaron J. Russo woke me up with his film, um, Freedom to Fascism, in a hotel room. In, in, um, he woke me up to the, uh, to the fraud of the Federal Reserve. But Anthony J. Hilder woke me up to the Illuminati. So that's what started my research and starting to learn about other people like Fritz Springmeier. And, and, and we didn't even get a chance to speak with Edward Spencer, who was a personal friend of Eustace Mullins. And all of these other great truth seekers, yeah. the, the real truth seekers. Yeah, and, 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 and Eustace, Mullins, <clears throat> Eustace Mullins was the, uh, I think, the original accurate expose of Federal Reserve. And much of his book uh, is in um, Ed Griffin's book, uh, Creature from Jekyll Island, and that is on the uh, the truth on Jekyll Island. But the uh, and the Jekyll Island operation was a monster, and it, it exists today. It, it attacks us today. We had to end the problem in America. We have to abolish the Federal Reserve. We have to abolish the Federal Reserve. My enemies, and Ed's enemies, and uh, Alex Jones's enemies, and I'm assuming your enemies as well, uh, are in that alliance of evil, the evil art, as I call it, uh, that tell us that a privately owned banking organization should exist and should create our money out of nothing and then tax us to pay the interest on the, what they create out of nothing. That's what we're being told. And I have talked, I've had conversations, long conversations on film with uh, the congressman uh, down there in Texas. I think he's running for president on Paul. Uh, Ron has blasted the Federal Reserve better than anyone in the country, but he has not exposed the existence of an oligarchy of evil that, that brought down uh, the, the World Trade Center. I yeah, talked to him about that. He hasn't talked about that, at least on film. I was disappointed. But there are individuals who are coming along and who are out there today who have exposed it and uh, very well. We did the first, the very, very first expose of the uh, attack upon the World Trade Center, and I did that with a fellow a friend of mine named Ted Gunderson. In 1993, there was the attack on uh, the Murrah building in Oklahoma. And after that, we had a conversation concerning the Murrah building, Ted and I, on our television program, and we were saying that they would be coming back, they, meaning the FBI and the CIA and apparatchiks of this evil arche, to do the building again on 
the 11th of the month. Uh, we're talking about 911. On the 11th of, November, of uh, September in 2001, we said that they were. Uh, we were on the phone together. He says, they've done it, Anthony. I said, I know. Uh, he says, we've got to get on it. I said, we are on it. We were actually making a film on the 11th of September, 2001, about the second attack upon the World Trade Center, as conducted by apparatchiks of this government. It was done with our monies. There's the first attack was then with our monies and the information uh, validating that was in the New York Times. Chief Omar Abdel Rockman was, was uh, uh, given carte blanche invitation to this country by the State Department and the last time I checked it was a, that was an agency of uh, this government. They also gave him the bomb, and and they they wanted it to. He got him on tape. The oh, they, bomb. they bought the bomb. Yeah, with a he said no, no, we want yeah, it to be a live the bomb. bomb. The bomb was bought by agents of this government. The federal money. The FBI. Your money was bought. That's right. Yes, FBI. That's right. Our the tax FBI, dollars. As I call it. That's right. And and they fortunately so, had it uh, on tape that they caught the guy on tape, but nobody listens. But that, uh, in, in, that may be the reason why uh, Horowitz and uh, Sherry Kane is uh, against uh, Alex Jones and myself and uh, has been against Ted, because we expose that. And the people who don't want that exposed are the enemy. But I don't know whether he's just, you know, confused or... Somebody's convinced them are under some sort of mind control program. I don't know. So I'm not going to make that statement until I find out with absolute certainty. Well, like I said, let's make... Let's oh, Anthony, make, this is Ed Spencer. You do great work. Go ahead, Ed. Dr. Ed Spencer, congratulations on your new film. It's fantastic. Thank you. I just wanted to say, Anthony, you do terrific work. You really do great work. And um, Howard, thank you for this, having this program. Thank um, you for coming on, Edward. Not this exactly will... what I expected today. I, I think I don't think any of us expected this today. <laughs> um, but I'm going to invite you uh, both on again, uh, and certainly, Mr. Spencer. I owe you a lot of time because we, we are, we, you definitely, we spoke, and there's so much to go over. I mean, you're a neurologist from Yale, with again from with Stanford and Yale. 30 plus years in uh, studying, waking up to the Illuminati in 1996. I mean, it's just the work you're doing, exposing the vaccines, exposing all the poisons in the air and the water. Uh, the people have to hear your voice, sir, and I'm going to make sure they do. So please join us again. I will make arrangements uh, after the show if, uh, for that. Is that good for you, sir? That would be great. Fantastic. And Mr. Hilder, again. We can, we can all. Uh... We can all see uh, uh, Dr. Spencer, and if we simply go to uh, airfrap.org or we simply go to commoncrime.net, we can see Dr. Spencer and uh, on his program, Electrofying, Fine, F R Y I N G, San Francisco, Electrofine San Francisco, and it's part of the um, Smart Murder Meter series. And uh, um, when asked the question, I asked the question, I said, well, we, uh, how can I, I was talking a fellow in San Francisco, uh, Rod States, and I said, well, we have to go to a doctor to get this, this information. And the, Dr. Ed spoke up and says, why go to a doctor? Why believe us? Good why point. Why believe us? In other words, he was saying, the doctors don't have all of the answers. They don't. And to have a doctor admit to that is historic and uh, um, heroic. So, Dr. Ed Spencer, thank you, my friend, for all that you've done, all that you're doing, and all that I know that we are about to do. 
That's great. Listen, the Thank outro you, music's everybody. going. Yeah. Thanks out to Truth War and everybody. Yeah. We have Ronnie Bennett coming up on Outside the Margin. Please tune in right now. Uh, uh, Dr. Spencer, thank you again. Uh, Mr. Hilder, I'd like to talk to you again shortly, uh, just discussing this whole thing. And um, again, I just would like to have the opportunity to properly speak with you, sir, um, on air and have a proper interview. Um, I hope you can afford me that time. Well, I, uh, I certainly will. I know that it wasn't, uh, it wasn't your doing to have uh, 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 the, the hurricane and uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Uh, Lynn um, Horowitz on, uh, but uh, it happens. It makes good radio, my friend. I guess think it, of it that way. I guess it it's does, sir. Radio. I guess it does, sir. Hey, listen, I gotta cut. I gotta okay. end the call. We um, and um, God bless you. God speed for all you do. Um, you are, uh, you know, I'll be shooting with you, talking with you again. Uh, very great. And as they say in Spain and Mexico.